Hello booktube, it's Andrea here and I'm here with my wrap up for April and we will pick one out of the TBR jar in this and I'll explain why we're not doing a separate May TBR once I've done my wrap up. Now I only finished 10 books in April. Three of those were ebooks and two of those were audiobooks. So where they're ebooks I will and audiobooks I will put a copy of the cover up here somewhere. And then we'll go on to um, May's TBR. So the first book I actually did finish in, um, what were we in? April, was Agatha Christie's The Mystery of the Blue Train, which is one of the Poirot stories. And in this case, we follow Poirot as um, he tries to solve the murder on the blue train. So Ruth Kettering um, is murdered on the exclusive and luxurious blue train that goes to Nice. She's been killed with a heavy blow to the head. The prime suspect is her estranged husband, Derek, but Poirot is not convinced and he joins forces with one of the other uh, travellers on the, the train. And I won't admit, I can't remember her name, but I'm going to have a look to see what it is now because it's only in here. Ruth. I'm terrible, I should have looked this up before. Derek Ketrin, Ketrins, Ketrins, Nobel, Mrs. Hartfield, is it on here? Miss Gray, Catherine Gray, that's the name of the, the lady. She is also a traveller on the blue train. She meets Ruth Catherine, um, so Poirot enlists her assistance in trying to track down the murderer, and in fact, they find out who it is together. Lots of twists and turns, you're you are pretty much uh, introduced to all of the characters within the first few chapters, including the killer and his helper, so to speak. Um, but again, with, as with Agatha Christie, they twist and they turn, and it, it, you know, you, you could literally be expecting it to be any single one of the characters, even to the point that at one point, I suspected Catherine herself. Yeah, obviously it wasn't her, because she's helping Poirot. But then he's that kind of guy that would ask somebody he suspected of a murder to help him solve the murder, but it's not her. That's what I'm going to tell you. But it's a good one. I really enjoyed this um, Agatha Christie and I will be reading more shortly. The next one I read was an ebook, and it is All Aboard, um, the canal, uh, part one of the Ca Canal Boat Cafe series by Christina McLaughlin. Yeah, I think I gave this two stars. I haven't written the stars down because I was that disgusted. Why is it that whenever a woman sets up her own business in her, in her own, and she's got her own flat and she's happy, something happens and she has to go back home, home, and take over where her mother, who's now died, and had died a year ago, has left off. Why can't she just be happy doing what she is? Why does it always, is it made, oh no, you have to do this, this is your destiny, this is what you have to do. Why is it? Why, 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 why does it always have to be that the woman has to go home to take up where her parents left off because she hasn't got a life of her own, an identity of her own, she's got to be exactly what her parents wanted her to be, exactly what her parents were. Oh no, I hate that. So that was like, not good points. Then they, of course, they introduced the, the, the nice man who's a photographer. Great, like him. And then at the end, at the end of the book, she's had a run in with the woman who runs the pub because her mother had an affair with the woman who runs the pub's husband. And instead of standing on the ground saying, look, tough, I'm here to stay, deal with it, she just ups and packs a freaking cafe up, the, the canal boat cafe, and sails off down the river. What's that about? Come on. She's a strong, independent woman until she goes back. And, and lives on this canal boat that her, her mother wanted and then suddenly she's all wishy-washy and can't stand, stand up for herself. I'm sorry. No, two stars. Please do not do that again to me. I want more from my books. I mean, really? Why? I can understand her yet yeah, maybe being happy to go back eventually and enjoying running the cafe. The why? Um, but I can't understand the whole, oh, she's a strong, independent woman, but yeah, she can run this cafe and she can bring it back from the ring. Oh no, somebody's had a go at her, I'm going to go. She's going to like crawl off. I didn't like that. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, the third book I read, I have enough of that rant. Oh, was part of the Terry-thon, Terry-thon? Terry the Terry-pratchett-a-thon. 
We were rereading the Discworld series and I read book three which is Mort. Mort tells the story of a um, promising gangling teenager who uh, his dad decides to apprentice out. He doesn't get apprentice, nobody wants him until midnight when death comes along. That's right, death. Big tall six foot skeleton with a scythe and a hood and a horse named Binky. Because every every white stallion should be called Binky, shouldn't they? Yeah. So okay he is apprenticed to death and he is taken to it quite happily until it comes for the Princess Kelly of Stolat to be murdered by her evil uncle and he doesn't think that's fair because she's young and she's pretty and she should have a life. So he stops her assassination only to find out that had her uncle taken over, although he was nasty and mean and evil, that in the end everything would work out all right because the countries would band together and there'd be years of plenty. But even though he saved her, Destiny has other ideas. The world thinks she shouldn't be there. She doesn't exist. Apart from the fact she's alive. But nobody else can see that she's alive. They all think she's dead. So when they meet her in the corridor, they're very uncomfortable because they're not actually sure why she's there and why... Yeah, they're not 100% sure. So can Mort and his sidekick Isabel, who is Death's granddaughter, and that's another story on its own. It's told in here and you have to read it to find out. Can they stop Kelly being squeezed out of existence while putting the timeline of the Discworld back on track? And Death has decided that he doesn't want to be Death anymore. So he gets a job as a fast order chef. And it's in this book that he immortals uh, utters the immortal line, I could murder a good curry. Only to be asked, well, how do you eat a curry? Where does it go? Because it, so it just drops through the bones. So that was Mort by Terry Pratchett. I'm not going to give this stars because I just adore all of them. And that would not be fair to all the other authors in the world because Terry Pratchett rocks. But that's the only Pratchett I read, sadly. The next book I read I, was one I actually listened to. Yay! So I actually finished another audiobook this month. Whoa, go me. And that was A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. You don't need me to tell you about that. It started off slow. We all know it starts off slow. It's a beauty of the beast retelling. But I bloody loved it. I didn't think I would. I was like, oh, here we go. I loved it. And at the end, I was in tears. And it doesn't, it takes a lot to put me in tears from a book. I actually cried at the end. So yay, five stars to Sarah J Mass and A Court of Thorns and Roses. I have downloaded a Court of Mist and Fury, the second book in this series um, on Audible to listen to at some point when I finish listening to what I'm currently listening to, which is going to actually take quite a while. So I loved it. Thank you, Sarah J Mass. I know I'm late on the bandwagon, but I really, really enjoyed it. Book five, A Study in Scarlet by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Hence, another audiobook because I got my credit, which is $7.99 for Audible. So I went on to Amazon and I downloaded the definitive Sherlock Holmes read by Stephen Fry, which has a retail price of £70. I got it for one credit of £7.99. Pahagin! I have so far listened to A Study in Scarlet and half of the next one, which is The Sign of Four. It's Sherlock Holmes. I'm not going to go into it. I love Sherlock Holmes and who else could read it better than Stephen Fry? Only Stephen Fry can get away with using words like by Jove and you not think it's hysterically funny and dated because it's Stephen Fry and he's fantastic. Um, so yes, I loved that. Book six was an ebook. I will put it up here. And that was called The Frozen Witch by Odette C. Bell. Now The Frozen Witch tells the story of Lily White, who's a witch and she doesn't know it. Um, and she also works as a waitress for this guy who is not exactly 100% nice. He's a bit of a gangster, Larry. So she um, is expected to go and visit her dying grandmother at the beginning of the book, but Larry asks her to go and work because he's desperate for a, a waitress and he can't be there all the time. So she reluctantly agrees, knowing that it might be her grandmother's last night on earth. And it is in fact that. When she gets to the, the function, she's drawn to this room where there is a box and she goes into it and then she is discovered by the owner of the box and he can see that she is a witch and he is frightened because of the type, type of magic that she has even he can't control it so he puts some bangles on her and says he is 
she can, she must never take them off and he, she must now work to repent her sins her crimes being not going to her grandmother on her deathbed um and basically accuses of killing her grandmother which she it's going to be a little bit more complicated that it is a series um, and the other sins were that some petty theft she has not committed a major crime i enjoyed that i can't remember what i gave it three or four stars enjoyed that but i now need to get to the other one the next book is The Married Girls by Dini Costello. Um, this was sent to me by Head of Seuss in exchange for a free and honest review. And I have a full review of that posted on my blog. So I will link that down below. So I did enjoy it. I think I gave it four out of five stars. It was well written, really enjoyable. Um, definitely, definitely worth picking up. Now it is the second in a series. And I, I did read on Amazon that you have to read the first book, which is The Girl With No Name, which tells the story of Charlotte coming to the UK. Um, on the kinder transport in World War Two, but I found that I didn't need to read the first book to enjoy the second book because it recapped the bits that were pertinent to this story. So yes, definitely enjoyed that one. Pick it up. Another book that was sent to me by Head of Zeus, what the review was, uh, Leslie Thompson's The Dog Walker. Leslie Thompson writes a series of books called The Detective's Daughter, and this is book five in the series. And basically, it tells the story of. Um, Stella, who is the detective's daughter, going to solve a old murder. So in 1987, Honey, Helen Honeyset, an estate agent, disappears while walking her dog on the towpath of, uh, of, of London on, on the Thames. She's actually jogging and um, she disappears. A man is suspected, arrested, released because there's no real evidence. He his life is ruined and he kills himself and it's only in 2016 that one of those houses is sold to a property developer who is convinced that there are ghosts on there. So Helen Honeyset, she is convinced it is the ghost of Helen Honeyset. So Stella sends her friend Jack and business partner to uh, go and clean it. He's into ghosts and spiritualism but she also runs a cleaning company. Around this same time she's also hired by Adam Honeyset, Helen's husband, to actually solve the mystery of his wife's disappearance. Well written, totally enjoyed it. Again, although it's one in a series you do not need to read all the others, although I am going to track them down and add them to my collection because I really enjoyed this one. I think I gave it four out of five stars. Yes, four. Next one is another ebook. This one was free from NetGalley in exchange for a fair and open review. And this is the new book by Kathy Rex, which isn't out till July and it's two nights. In this book, um, Kathy Rex introduces a new character, Sunny Knight. Her name is Sunday. Don't even go there. Um, Sunny is a recluse. She was in the army. She was invalided out. Then she went into law enforcement and she got invalided out of that. She has a bit of trouble in her life. And Basically, she is hired by the parent, the grandparent of um, this girl who went missing a year before. Now, her daughter and her, her grandson were killed in an explosion, a terrorist attack, but the granddaughter just disappeared. And she hires Sunny Knight to find out who it was that um, did the terror attack and, if possible, find her, her granddaughter, which she does. It's a great book. I really enjoyed it. Again, four out of five stars. Kathy Rex, you can't go wrong. I love Sunny as a new character and her brother Gus. I can't wait to find out more. I hope there will be more in the, the Sunday Night series because um, I will definitely be buying them. I really, really enjoyed that one. And the last one is that I finished. I've just got to find it's in my pile was the Gunslinger by Stephen King for Missy Stephen Kingathon. She's listening to the books on audio. As you can tell, it takes me ages to listen to one audiobook. So I am reading them because I, and it took me a while to get into this book. I thought it was very odd to start with. Um, but as I got into it, I really, really enjoyed it. I think I only gave it three out of five stars, but I've got to be honest, I really am looking forward to reading part two, The Drawing of Three, to find out what goes on. So those are all the books I actually read in April. Not as many as I normally do. I normally average around 20 to 22. Part of this is because I've been doing a lot of colouring instead. Those of you who uh, watch my videos will see that there have been a lot of colouring videos and I am doing a lot of colour alongs. That doesn't stop me from reading. One of the reasons I do that is when I read I need perfect silence. I do not like to talk. I do not like to be interrupted and it's not fair on my partner that I just sit there reading all night and not talking to him. 
if I'm colouring, I will quite happily talk to him. If he's watching the football, I can sit there and colour and I can listen to an audiobook if I want to because I don't talk to him when there's football on because I can't stand the stuff. So, I didn't finish the book that I pulled from the TBR jar last month, which was Judy with Love by Lorna Smith. However, I am very near the end of it. I only have about 20 pages to go, so I will be pulling one out. Um, I'm still dreading it's going to be one of those massive, massive books. So I, I'm, I'm going to just pull this one out. Right, it's a pink. Let's see. Oh, I hope it's something good. And we have got... The Last Oracle by James Rawlins. This is one I bought in the works on their three... No, I think they were all either on... No, yeah, they were on sale for like a 50p or something. So it's not a huge book from what I remember. So, so the last... I don't know if you can actually read that because it's tiny writing. The Last Oracle by James Rawlins. That I will be pulling from my TBR pile and adding it to my May um, pile of books I want to read. I will still be continuing to read the books I planned on reading last month. So that is... Um, Equal Rights by Terry Pratchett. The next one um, in A Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin, which I can't remember the name of, but that one. Obviously, the the, the next one, The Drawing of Three, um, Rebel of the Sands, and Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, because they were on there. I think that's it. There might be another one, but I'm not sure. So that is what I read in April. That is what I'm going to be reading in May. I hope to see you soon, BookTube. I've talked 19 to the dozen, but I will see you soon. Bye.